This week in 3D Archery, another box in the mail. Hey everybody, welcome to 3D Archery. Greg here. Finally got it. Um, second one I bought. First one I bought came in destroyed. What is it? It's a Ben Pearson Javelina. Alright, pretty good bow. Um, paid about $95 for it on eBay. Before we go any further, let's take a quick look at the history. everybody there you go you have it no let's go over some things I'll you know repeat what I said it was introduced in 1959 as the model 974 it's always been a 66 inch bow it was originally called a semi recurve and in 1958 it had a leather wrap on it and that's the only year you had it so if you see an older one with a leather wrap you know it's 1958 the original one in 1958 was designed by Ben Pearson himself I like that fact in 1959, they changed the model number to the 966, and they dropped the leather wrap. And that stayed the same all the way up to 1963. Then in 1964, they introduced this model design of bow, right? And it was called Model 708. And this lasted from 1964 to 1967, the model number. Now for Woods, in 1964, it was the only year there was a multi-laminated wood it consisted of zebra wood, cherry, and white holly. So if you see one like that, designed like this, but with those multi-colors, you know it's 1964. In 1965, they went to a, a solid handle, we'll get more about in a minute, of Purple Heart. Never heard of that, used in Ben Pearson Bows. And in 1966, they went over to Ola the wood that nobody can find out what it really is. In 1968, Ben Pearson sold the company and the new company came in and changed all the model numbers. And so it went from a 708 to a 7060. And all the handles, the risers I should say, were made out of bubinga. Now, in 1968, they put a stabilizer hole taper, tapered in there in the front of the bow so you could put a stabilizer on it. So if you got that, you know it's from 1968 to 1970. And then in 1969, they edged the shelf and they made it what they call biradial. Now here's some really interesting things I found while researching it. Draw lengths. From 1964 to 1967 on this design bow, the draw length was 30 inches. But from 1968 to 1970, it became 31 inches. And it gets even better, because then you go to the draw weights. From 1964, 1965, and 1966, you could order this bow in 30 to 55 pounds. From 67, 68, and 69, you could order it from 25 to 55. And then from 1970, you can order it from 30 to 50. And it gets even better, brace height. 64, 65, and 66, the recommended brace height was 7 to 7.5 inches. But for uh, 67, 68, 69, and 70, 
the recommended brace height was seven and a half to eight and a quarter inches. Right. One thing you need to know on all these, if it's white limbs, they're supposed to be for bows weighed under 40 pounds, and brown limbs was for bows over 40 pounds. It's not a set in a stone rule, because they had a lot of custom mortars. And let me tell you, Ben Pearson would make this bow in any wood that you want, any color combinations that you want, if you special ordered it. And that was pretty neat. So you'll see a lot of variations on your Ben Pearson bows. All right, I'm gonna bring you in, we're gonna take a closer look at this bow, and I'll point out some unique features and little things you should know about Ben Pearson bows. All right, as we start on the bow, you see these right here. They're actually just decals they put on there, but they're on all of the Javelinas. Um, starting around, I think, 1968 it was, they started putting these on. I know the, the 64 and 65s, I don't believe, had it. And so when you work on a Ben Pearson, you work your way up, and here you come to the best part. So, let's go with serial number first. These serial numbers mean next to nothing. All right, AC.3, could be a one or slash 94, all right? Impossible, 66, 35 pounds at 28. Now if you have a Ben Pearson has an X in front of it, that means you subtract one pound. If the X is after the number, you increase it to one pound, okay? We're going to work with the bow, you can see some, um, you know, wear and tear. Here is that bi-radio shelf that I was telling you about. You can see a small crack right there. Large sight window. Then you're going to see something right here. See that line? All right, that line's a big trick on the Ben Pearson bows. And I'll flip it over and show you. Now if you come to the back, you're going to see the other older had sights on it. I'm going to take that off. So Ben Pearson bows were not made out of one piece of wood. And they did two pieces and laminated. You can see the line right there where the two pieces were laminated together. And you can see the grains matched up. So they cut a piece of wood, laminated it back together. Now why would you do that? They did that to make the bows stronger. If you laminate a piece of wood, like plywood, the same theory, it's stronger than one piece. There's that tapered hole for the... Um, stabilizer if I so want it. You can see that the design is pretty squared. There's a better image. You can see the bi-radio shelf. And if we flip it over this way, you can see it's even curved on that side. There's that funky little <laughs> sight. So if you're ever wondering about dating a Ben Pearson bow, this is how you date them, by the logo. Um, they changed them every so often. There is a big gap from like 50, 58 to 63, I believe, used all the same ones. But after that, from that to like 1968, every two years they switched it. So you can see there's my model number, 7060. This logo was used in 68 and 69. We know that in 1969, or sorry, 68, they put this in. But we also know in 1968 was the first year that they had this. And the logo for 1970 is different than it is for 69. So this, going by the bi-radio shelf, the stabilizer point, and the logo is a 1969 Ben Pearson Javelina. All right, I'm gonna take it, we're gonna work on it. I'm not gonna clean it up, I'm gonna get me a string I'm going to take this off, set it up, we'll take it out to the range, and we'll see how it shoots. Alright everybody, out here at the range, not a bad shot, and that shot is what I have to say about this bow. It's a great bow, easy to shoot. Um, 34 pounds, it better be, right? One thing I didn't know about it was it actually has a twist in the upper limb. It's a slight twist, I've left it like that. In fact, I shot an indoor 450 league, which is that target, three arrows done 15 times, and I averaged um, 330. High is 350. My low is 326. Um, it's pretty good. You know what? 
couple of things on this bow to me. Um, definitely not cut to center. All right, or possibly exactly to center, which means my arrow's sitting slightly off center. Because you can see where they, they made this out of two pieces of wood and it runs almost perfect into that. Um, this handle is massive. Right? Massive. Compared to the Colt, which has a much smaller handle, even my Pinto, the only one with a bigger handle than this is my Palomino. And speaking of that, you know, where did this bow fall into the Ben Pearson line? Well, Palomino was on top. That was a pure target bow. They called that the Bow of Champions. The Pinto came right below it, and that was the uh, combination target slash hunting bow. Swinehart, I think his name. There's a famous picture of him in Africa carrying a Pinto out there hunting. And then came the Javelina. And the Javelina was a hunting slash target bow. And then finally came the Colt, which was the introductory target bow and hunting bow. Um, Interesting why, you think about it, Palomino's a horse, Pinto's a horse, Colt's a horse, but the Javelina's a pig. <laughs> so, they did something different there. Alright, so what we're going to do is I'm going to just shoot a little bit and we'll talk about it, right? I'll give you my impressions on it as I shoot it and things like that. Um, when I'm talking, I don't shoot that well, so don't expect the greatest from me. Okay, everybody, quick setup when I'm running. Brace height, seven and three quarters. I'm running a Dacron string, that's all I run out of these old bows, made by Grizzly Jim. Great string, by the way. The guy can make some strings, I'm telling you. I don't know what he does. You know, most strings start to fray up here. Not gems, man. This thing is held on. Awesome Puff Silencers by Joanna. Does great work, too. Uh, my knock, high, knock point's really high. I run a high knock point. Arrows are my Go Tip Traditional XT's, 600 spine, 200 grain point, Five inch feathers, four of them. Now the feathers isn't nothing big, okay? Um, I try to use these arrows on as many bows as possible. And the reason I use these big long ones with four of them is I found they show up better on camera on my 3D shoot so you guys can see the arrow traveling through the air. And as you can see there, there's my knock point. That's about level. A lot higher. So why did I do that? Well, I found with my anchor point up here now, and this knock point, I'm almost point on. I'm actually a little higher than normal. I could play with it, but you know what? It was close enough for me. My mind could work with it. Um, when I shoot low, it's because I go back to always wanting to put the arrow on the bottom of the target, but I was having a hard time achieving that with this. Yep. No hand shock, nothing. I felt nothing. Um, easy to hold. You heard it's a little loud. You know, I can live with that. It's an indoor bow. I'm not going to use it outdoor. Plucked. Did you see the hand? Did you see that? Oh my god. That was horrible, Greg Remark. Now let's see if we can do it better. That shows you the problem with plucking. I still pluck from time to time. I can keep my hand back to my face. It's all dependent on this right here. I shoot well. Now that I'm aware of it, I'll watch it. That's what happens to me when I shoot. All right, when I say that's what happens when I shoot, I just start getting a routine, and I just get comfortable. I don't even think about it, and then I do this over pulling thing. It's just, you know, my body wanting to compensate or something for the hold, but that's all right. Not too bad for an old man with gray hair, right? All right, that's the Pinto, or the Pinto. <laughs> I love that one too. The Javelina, it's a great bow. I'm telling you, boys and girls, find them online. I think you might be pleasantly surprised. No, these old bows, 
you know, from the golden age. <laughs> um, they're a lot of fun to me. I just love having them. You know, this bow's 50 years old. I'm out here shooting in the red and hitting, clipping the yellow with it, and I'm not the greatest shot. All right, Ben Pearson Javelina, one to put on your list because you might actually like it. All right, boys and girls, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time with an all-new episode of 3D Archery. Thank you.